South Africa is a beautiful country, rich in its cultural diversity and human talent, inspiring great vision. When I think of our beautiful land, I think of our history of struggle, a struggle for dignity, justice, and humanity. The many South Africans who have died in the cause of freedom, peace, and a better life for all our people. The beauty of our country is surpassed only by the beauty of our people, a people rich in the diversity of our many cultures, many cultures, but one people. In 1960, ANC President Chief Albert Lutulu wrote, There remains before us the building of a new land, a home for men and women who are black, white, brown, a synthesis of the rich cultural strains which we have inherited. Somewhere ahead, there beckons a civilization, a culture, which will take its place in the parade of God's history, besides other great human synthesis. In pursuit of this vision, Albert Lutuli embodied the dignity and restraint that characterized decades of resistance to colonial and apartheid oppression, the ethos of nonviolent protest, precipitating the formation and growth of the African National Congress. One must believe in the goodness of man. For if you cease to trust man, how can you operate in the world? I, I humbly say, I attribute all actions of men to the weaknesses which we possess, human frailty. I mean, even the white man's oppression arises out of selfishness, pride and greed. Well, those are universal weaknesses. They may be intensified under certain situations amongst some people. And I repeat, once you cease to have belief in man, then you cease to have belief in God, you know. Chief Lutuli's stature as leader, statesman and father of the struggle against oppression was acknowledged by the world community in December 1961. A true patriot, for his commitment to peace, justice and equality for all, he became the first South African to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Friends, I like to say, quite long ago, my forebearers extended a hand of friendship to people of Europe when they came to that continent. What has happened to the extension of that hand, only history can, can say. If history be the final judge, the African hand of friendship was met with the iron fist, colonial conquest and dispossession of the land. Inspiring generations to come, Bambata ignited the flame of resistance in 1906, opposing the imposition of the poll tax, which forced Africans to seek work in the cities and down the mines. Bambata was brutally put down and his severed head paraded in triumph across the country by the colonial authorities. Colonial conquest provided fertile ground for the seeds of apartheid and the Grand Bantustan design of the Nationalist Party government. Over three million African people were forcibly removed from their homes in the decreed white South Africa and dumped destitute in the barren Bantustans. Confined to 14% of the land, African families were torn apart and breadwinners forced into the twilight existence of migrant workers and the degradation of single-sex hostels. Influx control and the brutal enforcement of past laws turned everyday African people into criminals as large-scale prosecutions took place countrywide on a daily basis. To ensure a bountiful source of exploitable African labor for a white apartheid economy, Bantu education, an inferior and separate education system for blacks, was imposed. 
By the end of the 1950s, the Nationalist Party government was firmly in pursuit of their final objective, the dispossession of every African person of citizenship and fundamental rights in South Africa. In Africa, as our contribution to peace, we are resolved to end such evils as oppression, white supremacy, and racial discrimination, all of which are incompatible with world peace and security. Canvassing against the exclusion of Africans from the political process, the African National Congress was launched in 1912 in direct response to the declaration of the All-White Union Parliament. Characterized by its vision of a non-racial society, the ANC mobilized along non-violent lines, a tradition partly inspired by Gandhi and later by the passive resistance campaign mounted by the Indian community against the imposition of the so-called Ghetto Act by the Smuts government, which sought to segregate the Indian community and restrict their access to land and business rights. With the ANC's defiance campaign in 1952, black, white, Indian and colored South Africans rallied in their thousands in a non-racial alliance against apartheid. Over 8,000 people were arrested and went to jail as racist laws were singled out and deliberately defied and broken. This surging spirit of defiance prevailed unabated and on June 26, 1955, Thousands of South Africans gathered in a non-racial celebration of the Congress of the People and the Declaration of the Freedom Charter, a constitution of the people which declared that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white together, and that no government can justly claim authority unless it is based on the will of the people. Later that year, women took on the Nationalist Party government in full force in protest at the imposition of passes for African women. In defense of home and family life, under the banner of the Federation of South African Women, they marched on Pretoria in their thousands on the 9th of August 1956. The protests spread across the country. Over 2,000 women were arrested and many injured as the government responded with customary force. On the 5th of December 1956, in a bid to stem the groundswell of popular defiance of apartheid laws, the Nationalist Party government arrested 156 of the Congress leadership. The treason trial, which followed, dragged on for four years before the accused, all found not guilty, were released. Peaceful protest continued, and defiance, people burnt their passes and faced the consequences. At Sharpeville on the 21st of March 1960, police opened fire on men, women and children gathered in protest at the past laws. 69 people were killed, many of them shot in the back. Detaining over 2,000 people, the government declared a state of emergency and declared the ANC an illegal organization. There are many people who feel that uh, the reaction of the government to our stay at home, ordering a general mobilization, arming the white community, arresting 10,000 of Africans, the show of force throughout the country, notwithstanding our clear declaration that this campaign is being run on peaceful and non-violent lines, close the chapter as far as our methods of political struggle are concerned. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and non-violence against a government whose reply is only savage attacks on an unarmed and defenseless people. With 50 years of non-violent protest failing to change the course of the apartheid regime, on December 16, 1961, armed resistance to apartheid oppression was born with the formation of Umkondo Sizwe. In August 1962, Nelson Mandela was arrested and sentenced to five years imprisonment for inciting workers to strike and for leaving the country illegally. The Rivoni trial followed and Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu and nine other ANC executives were sentenced to life imprisonment on Robben Island. With 
mass detentions of prominent members, the imprisonment of leaders, and the banning of the organization inside South Africa, the ANC survived in exile and developed into an internationally renowned liberation movement under the leadership of Oliver Tambo. What we want in South Africa is that our humanity should be acknowledged, that those who are ruling in that country should pay some respect to the concept of human dignity. You have 12 million people in South Africa who are treated as if they were subhumans. We don't want this status. We are rejecting it entirely. And we want to be liberated or to liberate ourselves if nobody will do that. We will liberate ourselves so that in South Africa, I should feel that I'm a human being in that country. And I don't feel so now at all. I feel I'm a stranger, a foreigner, and at best, um, an animal in South Africa. This is how I feel. Inside South Africa, oppression intensified protesting against inferior Bantu education and a government decree that Africans be the medium of instruction, the youth were swept to the cutting edge of the struggle in the watershed that was June 16, 1976. Battles between police and school children in cities across South Africa left over 500 dead. Authorities cracked down with the iron fist. Police brutality, torture and deaths in detention became the order of the day. Hundreds of young people fled the country and with new resolve joined the ranks of Umkonto Wesizwe to fight apartheid oppression through the armed struggle. Internally, in 1983, the launch of the United Democratic Front harnessed the grand swell of grassroots resistance into organized mass-based structures defying the new apartheid reforms imposed by the Nationalist Party government. The UDF brought together over 500 organizations representing workers, women, youth, students and civic organizations in the broadest non-racial anti-apartheid alliance since the Congress of the People in 1955. Once again, the government reacted with the iron fist. By 1986, a countrywide state of emergency was in place. Over 30,000 people had been detained and numerous political activists murdered by vigilante agents of the state. By 1989, a fully-fledged defiance campaign was underway as countrywide people deliberately broke their banning orders and defied institutionalized apartheid laws. The armed struggle and international economic pressure intensified. By 1990, the Nationalist Party government was finally forced to abandon its grand apartheid design and after 80 years of struggle against colonial and apartheid oppression, the ANC was unbanned and political prisoners released. Since its return in the past three years, the African National Congress has taken its rightful place as the representative people's political structure inside South Africa. At the forefront of negotiations and the establishment of the Transitional Executive Council, the African National Congress looks forward to South Africa's first free and fair democratic elections on April 27th this year. I pledge that in whatever time remains to me, I will use all my strength to help bring about peace, democracy, justice for all in our country. When I look to the future, 
I say the beauty of a land and its people, fulfilled in the vision of a non-racial, non-sexist, just and equal society, where all are guaranteed dignity and human rights. Yes, South Africa is a beautiful country, and South Africa belongs to all of us who live in it. Black and white, together, we are all South Africans with a shared destiny. Now is the time to realize our dream and elect a government that will stand for the people, address our needs, hopes, and aspirations. Oh, yeah. 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 Y